Eddie Tech's demonstration video, Cinderella Zalushka. This is a demonstration of the Eddie Tech treatment of a dual language text, in this case Cinderella by Charles Perrault, translated by Turgenev. Eddie Text is a service, not a product. The service is to help you develop language teaching videos like this one with your choice of a text, your choice of words to translate, your translations, and your narration. Edutext will deliver a video similar to this, as well as a PowerPoint for use in class, flashcard software for vocabulary review, and quiz preparation software, all at a price of only three hryvnia per word. This is only one of many demonstration videos. If you're interested, please look at the others and contact us. Graham Seibert in Ukraine, 096-565-6229. Once upon a time, there was a gentleman who married for the second time. His second wife was the proudest and most arrogant woman who ever lived. She had two daughters of her own who were exactly like her in every way. The gentleman also had a young daughter of his own who was full of goodness and had a sweet nature. She took after her mother, who was the loveliest lady in the world. As soon as the wedding was over, the stepmother's bad temper began to show itself. She could not bear the good nature of this young girl because it made her own daughters appear all the more hateful. The stepmother made her do all the hardest work in the house. She had to wash the dishes and tables, sweep the stairs, scrub the floors, and clean out her stepmother's and stepsister's bedrooms. The poor girl had to sleep in the garret at the top of the house on a miserable straw mattress while her sisters lay in a richly decorated bedrooms on the most fashionable of beds with full-length mirrors so they could look at themselves from head to foot. The poor girl put up with all this patiently, not daring to complain to her father. If she had done so, he would have been cross with her because he was entirely under the thumb of his wife. When she had finished her work, she used to go into the corner of the hearth and sit down among the cinders, so she was called Cinder Girl. The younger of the two sisters, who was not as rude as the older one, called her Cinderella. Yet Cinderella, in spite of her poor clothing, was a hundred times more lovely than her sisters, although they were always dressed very richly. It happened that the king's son was giving a ball, and he invited all the important people to it. This included the two young ladies because they cut a very grand figure among the people of the countryside. <coughs> they were highly delighted with the invitation and very excited with choosing the gowns, petticoats, and hairstyles that they would look best in. This made Cinderella's work even harder because it was she who had to iron her sister's linen and pleat their ruffles. All day long they talked of nothing but what they would wear. For my part, said the older sister, I'm going to wear my red velvet suit with the French trimmings. And I, said the younger, am going to wear my usual skirt. But to make up for this, I will put on my cloak with the golden flowers and my diamond necklace, which is far from being any old thing. They sent for the best hairdressers they could find to make up their hair in a fashionable style and bought patches for their cheeks. They asked for Cinderella's advice in everything because she had good taste. She gave them the best advice she possibly could and even offered her services to dress their hair, which they were very glad to accept. As she was doing their hair, they asked her, Cinderella, wouldn't you like to go to the ball? Young ladies, she said, you're laughing at me. There's no place for the likes of me. You're right, they replied. People would laugh their heads off to see a cinder girl at a ball. Anyone but Cinderella would have made a mess of their hair, but she was so kind she styled it beautifully. They could hardly eat anything for nearly two days. They were so excited about the ball. They broke more than a dozen laces trying to tighten their corsets to make themselves look slimmer. 
and then they spent all their time looking into their mirrors. The happy day arrived at last. Off they went, with Cinderella gazing after them as long as she could. When they were out of sight, she burst into tears. Her step-godmother found her sobbing her heart out and asked her what was the matter. I wish I could. I wish I could. But she was crying so much she couldn't finish. Her godmother, who was a fairy, said to her, You wish you could go to the ball, don't you? Oh, yes, I do, said Cinderella with a sigh. Well, said her godmother, are you going to be a good girl? Then I'll see to it that you go. Then she took her into her room and said to her, Run into the garden and bring me a pumpkin. At once Cinderella ran out into the garden to pick the best one she could find and brought it to her godmother. She had no idea how this pumpkin would help her get to the ball. Her godmother scooped it out thoroughly till there was nothing left but the rind. Then she touched it with her magic wand and the pumpkin was instantly turned into a fine golden coach. Then she went to look in the mouse trap, where she found six mice all alive. She ordered Cinderella to open the gate of the trap a little, and gave each little mouse a little tap with her wand as it went out. Instantly it turned into a fine horse, and the six mice made a fine set of six horses, all a beautiful dappled gray, like a mouse. She couldn't think what to do about a coachman, so Cinderella said, I'll go see if there might be a rat in the rat trap that we could turn into a coachman. Good idea, replied her godmother. Go and look. Cinderella brought the rat trap to her, and in it were there were three huge rats. The fairy godmother chose the one with the largest whiskers, and when she touched him with her wand, he turned into a fat coachman with the finest mustache and whiskers ever seen. Next, she said, go out into the garden and you'll find six lizards behind the watering can. Bring them to me. No sooner had she done this than her godmother turned them into six footmen who immediately jumped up behind the coach, their liveries all trimmed with gold and silver, holding on as if they had done nothing else all their lives. Then the fairy said to Cinderella, Well, here's everything you need to go to the ball. Aren't you happy now? Oh, yes, she cried. But how can I go looking like this in these rags? The godmother just touched her with her wand, and instantly her poor rags changed into a dress of gold and silver, all decked with jewels. Then she gave her a pair of glass slippers, the prettiest in the whole world. Wearing her lovely dress, she climbed into the coach. But her godmother warned her that on no account must she stay past midnight. If she stayed even one moment longer, her coach would turn back into a pumpkin, her horses, mice, her footmen, lizards, and her beautiful clothes, looking just like they did before. She promised her godmother she would be sure to leave the ball before midnight. She drove away, scarce able to contain herself for joy. The king's son was told that a great princess had arrived, and he ran out to greet her. Nobody knew who she was. He offered her his hand as she stepped down from the coach and led her into the hall where the company were assembled. At once everything fell silent. The dancers stood still. The violin ceased to play. Everyone was so struck by the great beauty of the mysterious newcomer. Nothing could be heard except the confused sound of voices saying, Oh, isn't she lovely? Isn't she lovely? Even the king himself, old as he was, couldn't keep his eyes off her, and he murmured to the queen under his breath that it was a long time since he had seen such a charming and lovely creature. All the ladies there couldn't take their eyes off her hairstyle and clothes so they could copy them the next day. If only they could find such fine materials and clever dressmakers to make them. The king's son took her to the seat of honor 
and then led her out to dance with him. She danced so very gracefully that everyone admired her more and more. A fine supper was served, but the young prince couldn't eat a single mouthful. He was so taken up with the mysterious lady. She went and sat down beside her sisters and was very gracious and polite to them sharing the oranges and lemons with him that the prince had given her. They were very surprised at this because they had no idea who she was. As they were chatting together, Cinderella heard the clock strike quarter to twelve. At once she said goodbye to all the people there and rushed away as fast as she could. As soon as she got home, she ran to find her godmother, and when she had thanked her, she said she would love to go to the ball next day because the king said he had asked her to. As she was eagerly telling her godmother about everything that happened at the ball, her two sisters knocked at the door. Cinderella went to open it. What a long time you've been, she said, yawning, rubbing her eyes and stretching as if she'd only just woken up but she hadn't had the slightest desire to go to sleep since they'd left the house. If you'd been at the ball, said one of the sisters, you'd never have got tired of it. There was the most lovely princess, the most beautiful anyone ever saw. She was very charming to us and gave us oranges and lemons. Cinderella could scarcely contain herself for joy. She asked them for the name of the princess, but they told her they didn't know and that the king's son was very worried and would give the world to know who she was. At this, Cinderella replied with a smile, Was she so beautiful then? How lucky you were. Can I see her? Oh, dear Miss Charlotte, do lend me the yellow outfit that you wear every day. Oh, sure, cried Miss Charlotte. Just what I had in mind. Lend my clothes to a dirty cinder girl like you? Do you think I've taken leave of my senses? Cinderella was expecting an answer like this and was very glad of the refusal because it would have made things very difficult for her if her sister had lent her the outfit. The following day, the two sisters went to the ball and so did Cinderella, but dressed even more magnificently than before. The king's son was always at her side and spent the whole evening making charming speeches to her. Far from being annoyed by this, the young lady quite forgot her godmother's orders, and she heard the clock begin to strike twelve when she thought it couldn't have been more than eleven. She jumped up and ran away as swiftly as a deer. The prince followed, but he couldn't overtake her. She left one of her glass slippers behind, and the prince lovingly picked it up. Cinderella arrived back home quite out of breath, without her carriage, and in her old clothes, with nothing left of all her finery except one of the little slippers, the pair of the one she had dropped. The guards at the palace gate asked if they had seen the princess leave, replied they had seen nobody go out but a very poorly dressed young girl, who looked more like a poor country girl than a young lady. When the two sisters returned from the ball, Cinderella asked them if they had had a nice time and if the fine lady had been there. They said yes, but she ran away the moment it struck twelve, and so fast that she dropped one of her little glass slippers, the prettiest in the world, and the king's son had picked it up. They went on to say that he had done nothing but look at her the whole evening, and he was certainly very much in love with the beautiful owner of the glass slipper. And what they said was true. For a few days later, the king's son issued a proclamation to the sound of a trumpet that he would marry the girl whose foot exactly fit the slipper. First they tried it on the princesses, then the duchesses, then all the ladies of the court, but in vain. It was brought to the two sisters who tried as hard as they could to force a foot into the slipper, but they couldn't manage it. Cinderella, watching them and recognizing her slipper, said, laughing, Let's see if it will fit me. Her sisters burst out laughing and started to make fun of her. 
The gentleman who was sent to try the slipper had a good look at Cinderella and finding her very attractive, said it was only fair that sh she should try it on and that his orders were to let every young woman try it on. He made Cinderella sit down and putting the slipper on her little foot, he found it went on very easily and fitted like a glove. Her two sisters were truly astonished and even more when Cinderella pulled the other slipper out of her pocket and put it on her other foot. At that moment, in came her godmother, who touched Cinderella's clothes with her wand, making them even more magnificent than the ones she had worn before. And then her two sisters recognized that she was the lovely lady they had seen at the ball. They threw themselves at her feet and begged her to forgive them for all their ill treatment of her. Cinderella made them get up, hugged them, and said that she forgave them with all her heart and wanted them to be her friends forever. She was taken to the young prince dressed as she was. He thought she looked lovelier than ever and married her a few days later. Cinderella, who was as good as she was beautiful, gave her two sisters a home in the palace and married them that same day to two great lords of the court. Afterward, the advantage of a video such as this is that the student gets the maximum possible information. The original text in English, translations of the English words into Russian in this case, the translator's more liberal rendition of the text in Russian, and the narration of the English. Moreover, the students study it outside of class. They can stop the video and repeat. We encourage students to repeat what they've just heard both to capture the pronunciation and learn the vocabulary. Bear in mind that the vocabulary shown would be picked by you, the narration would be by you, and it would be of a text that you chose, not Cinderella. It could be a language you chose, both the original and the target language. You, the classroom teacher, provide your students with exactly the material you want your students to have. Eddie Text is a service, preparing teaching materials to your specification, not selling products. Here's my phone number on the slide below.